What's up guys, Earl at Sumo Bully Kennels uh, back at you. Uh, this is a new series we're starting. It is called Dog Talk, right? Random uh, topics about dog ownership, dog breeding, and just dog stuff, period. Everything from feeding to habits to everything else. So um, on today's first episode, um, as uh, some of you guys who've been following the channel uh, know, I went on vacation for three weeks to the Philippines. I was the best man at a wedding and uh, kind of rekindled my roots of uh, where I grew up and possibly future retirement. So without further ado, um, I'm going to give you a few tips here, right? Roughly 10 to 12 tips on uh, leaving your dogs when you go on vacation. <clears throat> so for me, let me share my experience. Uh, number one, uh, I paid help to pick a poo. Uh, I know there are services out there like uh, uh, Pooper, Scooper, and things like that. Uh, for me, I didn't have to do that because I do have some friends and uh, some employees that can do that for me. So... You know, it's not so much about what you're paying them. It's trusting people to go into your home, your yard, um, and around your dogs. So my choice of going with somebody I know versus paying a professional service um, is that I know this person. I trust this person. This person has been around my dogs. So I know, you know, you limit the liability of what can happen. So uh, that was number one for me. Um, Number two, uh, we had a family member um, kind of house sit and dog sit for us. Um, feeding the dogs, you know, watching them, letting them out, spending time with them. I think that's important uh, because dogs are social animals, right? They enjoy our company as much as we enjoy their company, to be honest. And uh, I was, uh, I felt good about having a family member stay at the house. Uh, could have been a friend as well, like a close friend, just to make sure that our dogs uh, were in good mental health, right? And not kind of being offset by not seeing us for about three weeks. Uh, well, when I set up my kennels, uh, number three is I set up cameras because I figured there would be a time where I wouldn't be home. And I had to check my cameras, make sure my dogs were okay, um, you know set the motion sensor to record to see if they're doing anything mischievous things like that so uh facility setup is important camera setup to be able to see something uh, for example if no one's at my home watching my dogs and i put the camera to record on motion if there's something going on that i don't like i can always make a call and say hey something going on there you know i don't like what i'm seeing so that for me, having that visual was very important. Uh, number four, food preparation, right? Now, typically, you know, when we vacation, it's typically about a week. But because we're going all the way across the other side of the world and the flight is roughly 22 to 24 hours, uh, we were going to spend a significant amount of time there, uh, three weeks. So, uh, if you are feeding kibble, I guess buy enough kibble, right? For me, um, we feed raw, all raw. So that's why, exactly why I invested in a freezer. Um, we grinded three weeks worth of food and froze it. And then uh, all the person feeding had to do was pull it out, defrost it, and uh, feed it to our dogs. So food preparation is key, whether you feed raw or you know, you do combo. Let's say, I know some people who feed raw and feed um, kibble. In which case, you just gotta make enough and uh, freeze it. You know, if you don't have a, uh, a deep freezer like I do, then I, I, you know, maybe get gallon Ziploc bags and portion it out per meal. For us, it's a little bit more because we have a lot of dogs on the yard. So, you know, before we left, we probably grinded close to 400 pounds of feed raw. Uh, that's about how much feed we go through, guys. It's serious. <laughs> Anytime I grind, I'm grinding two, three hundred uh, pounds uh, cumulatively between the meats, the carrots, the green beans, pumpkin, and all the other ingredients. We're somewhere around 300 plus pounds 
every time we grind, which is, you know, typically every 12 days, I would say. Um, another thing, right, like for me, I prefer that I have someone watch my house and my dogs is uh, it's important to acclimate your caregiver to your dogs and your dog's personality if you have multiples. So uh, having that person come into your home or your yard, whatever your setup is, to spend some time with your dogs and even accompany you when you're feeding them before you leave is a, a good assimilation, right? Because then your, your your dogs get accustomed to that person, they get used to that person. And also more importantly is that that person becomes uh, familiar with your dogs, your dogs' personalities, right? And if you, whether you have one dog or 10 dogs, all dogs have a little different personalities. Uh, we got some dogs are, you know, like Maki, she's super affectionate, right? Um, the problem is she's about 85 pounds right now at seven months and she still thinks she's a puppy. She will run up to you and throw her big body at you and she can knock you over or, you know, it's, uh, could be dangerous for someone watching your dogs if they're not used to handling big dogs. Uh, for you guys who are just tuning in and are new to our channel, we have XL American Bullies. These dogs get a hundred plus pounds and very, very powerful. Uh, very good tempered, however, they can hurt you if even if they don't mean to. And that's just by trying to jump on you and, and play with you and give you affection. And so getting the, the, your caregiver uh, acclimated to your, your dog's personalities and, and how to deal with them is very important. So, and, and you can't do that the day you're leaving, you know. That has to come over time, maybe a few weeks before you leave. For me, even longer, right? Uh, so number six for me I'm not comfortable with boarding my dogs uh, one I have young pups two I have a lot of dogs on the yard and three uh, you know the unfortunately the American bullies no matter what category you're in carries a stigma from the pit bulls right our dogs are all cropped and so to um, someone who doesn't know what they are they'll look at a dog and our dog and say it's a it's a big pit bull and we all know the stigma associated with a pit bull that it's a crazy dog it'll eat you kill you and all that other stuff um, even though that couldn't be further from the truth with the kind of dogs we have how uh you still have to consider that that many people in the public who are not enthusiasts of american bullies don't understand that our dog is not an American pit bull, game bred, bred for fighting or ratting or, you know, all these other purposes that the pit bull was bred for. And so just knowing that, uh, that our breed does carry a stigma and it's up to us to kind of clear that up. However, we're not fully there yet as a breed or as a community. And so with me, and with the kind of dogs we have, I am not comfortable with uh, boarding them to a dog boarding place, um, it just, to me, it just, it's a recipe for disaster, right? We have big dogs that like to play. They are puppies still, and they have that puppy energy. However, they don't know how strong they are. And uh, the same cannot be said for a lap dog or a dog that, you know, people carry around and put in a purse. Uh, that dog can be more aggressive than our dog, but because of the breed stigma, it amplifies the consequences and the situation if there were to occur. Okay, so uh, another point I'd give you guys, if you you know have a dog or multiple dogs and you're gonna take vacation or a long vacation is uh, setting up your place to make it easy, right? And so what I mean by that, like for us, we only allow one dog in the house and he's the adult, he knows the rules of the home. Everyone else has kennels and runs, um, but maybe you're a person with just one dog um, who's an indoor dog that, you know, is a family member inside the house. Uh, still, setting it up for them, if you want them to stay at home and not be boarded, is uh, important. So for me, how that looks is my kennels are set up, makes it easier for uh, whoever's helping us to feed also makes it easy for whoever's helping us to pick up uh, poo waste 
Now, for a uh, single person uh, pet owner, setting it up means uh, maybe training your dog, crate training your dog, right? Certain times of the day, so that maybe your caregiver is there for four or five hours and has to run errands, uh, you know, go about their daily life um, so that your dog is crate trained and your caretaker can crate your dog and go about their life before they come back so that your dog, you know, is not just running in the house wild because uh, it'll lead me to my next point. Uh, because dogs can, they're social animals, right? They're pack animals, so they can get separation anxiety. If you ever had a dog, you know that. And so that's what I mean by setting up to make it easy is uh, having a designated space or quarters for your dog, even a uh, kennel or a cage crate so that your dog knows, you know, it's time to go in the crate and the dog doesn't panic or freak out when it goes in the crate so that your caretaker or your friend or family member uh, can have an easier time handling your dog, um, putting your dog in its prospective space while he, she, you know, runs errands, goes to the grocery or whatever. So that's a very big part of it. Um, for me, I've cared for uh, friends uh, and relatives' dogs in the past where they went on a vacation. And a lot of times I just let them have them bring the dog to me. Uh, but again, these are pet home dogs where it's only one dog. And because I've been a dog person all my life, it's not a big deal. And typically, I, you know, every dog I've ever said it was an adult and not a puppy. With a puppy, I definitely create that puppy because you turn your back for one minute and that puppy is going to chew something, eat something, swallow something, and get into something you don't want it to. Um, and it's a big responsibility caring for someone's dog, you know. That dog swallows something it's not supposed to, has to go to ER. And now you have a situation, you know, that you could have avoided by... Again, setting it up and make it easy, right? Having a designated space for the dog. Uh, another thing, another tip I'd give you, I think we're at number, somewhere around number nine right now, is uh, emergency contact numbers, right? Uh, whoever's caring for your dog may or may not, you know, be familiar with the protocols that you have in place in case something happens. Uh, these protocols should include uh, having an uh, emergency contact number for your vet that you regularly go to. They know your dog already. And also uh, a facility, you know, the closest facility to you that's a 24 hour emergency vet in the event that something happens, God forbid, knock on wood. Um, it's important to have that. And I have, for myself, I have those. I have a place that's maybe 12 minutes from me. That's a 24 hour emergency animal clinic because life happens and you never know when it's gonna happen then. You know, we want to be diligent and make sure that we're prepared for a situation that we hope never happens. However, if it does, we want to provide um, immediate and due care for our pets who are our family members. So we're somewhere around nine now, nine or ten. Okay. Uh, for me, I plan trips around schedule. I check in with my people that, you know, I have more than one person on the list that I can contact if I had to leave town but I definitely plan my trips around the schedule, which means uh, communicating with people, family members and friends. Like, hey, you know, I gotta take a trip for X, Y, and Z for a week or two, whatever the case may be, and understanding what their schedule is so that I always have coverage. Um, unless, you know, I, I mean, there's only certain reasons why you would travel, uh, like standby last minute. And we all know, you know, th those are typically deaths and funerals so in that situation you know you just gotta scramble but for the most part uh travel for work or travel for leisure it's pretty much planned and scheduled and we know what it is so communicating with your people you know your team so to say right for me i have a team of a cleanup and a feeding and companionship and so communicating with those people is very important uh respecting their schedule and not just expecting them to be available whenever you decide you want to do something uh it's also giving them that respect and courtesy right because we want them there and we want to feel good 
you know, it's bad enough we're leaving our dog and we're missing our dog, but we want to leave our dog in, in good hands and good care. And so, you know, those people are very important to us as dog people, whether that's a relative or a friend, a cousin, whatever the case may be, uh, properly communicating with them, giving them their respect for them to be able to help you out. It's, uh, it's a key thing. And uh, with that said, also, if they do that for you, I definitely would say show appreciation, right? Whether that's a gift or compensation, you know, it's people are taking time out of their life to care for your children. And uh, you definitely want to take care of the people who take care of you. So, uh, you know, in that case, uh, <laughs> don't be cheap. I would say be a little extravagant and care for the people who care for the things that you love and care about. Uh, for us, that's dogs. Uh, separation anxiety uh, is a topic I wanted to cover. So for us, we don't really get much of that because uh, our dogs do not go on couches or on beds. You know, they have their, their cages, their runs, their, their crates. Uh, even our adult male that's allowed in the house that can come into the house at nighttime, he knows he's still a dog. Like he doesn't, you know, coming into the house is a privilege for him. And being inside, he knows he respects the house, doesn't use the bathroom in the house or anything like that. And a lot of that comes with early learning, early programming. Uh, dogs are very, very intuitive to you and to your schedule, and they're highly adaptive, right? And they're very observant. They know eating time. They know going out time. You pick up that lease. They're going crazy, you know, to go on that walk. And so that more so falls on us as dog owners than it does on the dog, right? It's that early training. Um, just having your systems in place, your schedules. So your dog already has these cues and keys of how things should operate. And they do learn fast. They're very, very smart when it comes to that stuff. Uh, lastly, uh, with everything that I covered, it's really, you know, dog ownership is a lifestyle and a commitment. You know, this is, uh, I would say, one step down from having a child. You know, you have to plan life around your dog, your work schedule, everything else, uh, vacations, trips. Uh, you can't just uh, connect with that dog whenever it's convenient for you. That dog has to be fed every day, has to use the bathroom every day. Uh, I feel that the dog, all dogs should have exercise time every day, the time to go out, stretch their legs, walk, run around, go to the park. You know, for us, fortunately, we have uh, a big space in our yard. So taking them out to the yard, throwing the ball, you know, just having them stretch out and releasing that energy is good. It allows them to just exercise and not feel cooped up so that uh, they don't become destructive. <laughs> because a dog that is under exercised and cooped up all day is just, you know, that's to me, in my experience, that's just a dog that's gonna chew things or get into something. A dog has to release that energy just like we do as human beings, so. With that said, guys, uh, that's about 12 or 13 tips on uh, going on vacation and leaving your dogs. Uh, very important one. That's why I started the series of Dog Talk, just to talk about normal topics. I mean, we are in the XL Bully Lane. However, a lot of these topics that I do want to discuss pertain to everybody who has a dog, who has one dog or two dogs or four dogs or breeds dogs, uh, wanted to touch base on these things and maybe some some of these things can help you if you haven't already uh guys go ahead and tap in subscribe uh, give us a like uh in fact uh if you have certain things that really work for you and caring for your dogs when you leave uh ha write us a message I i'd love to know that you know give me some tips i'd like to learn something from some of you guys out there who have been uh, long time dog owners or maybe dog breeders if there's a system you have in place, a certain thing that you do that really helps with that uh, time and transition while you go away, I would love to hear it. I'd love to read about it. Uh, let's connect. 
So with that said, guys, this wraps up our first episode of Dog Talk. If you're watching, thanks for listening. Thanks for uh, liking and subscribing. And I'll catch you on the next one.